hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii studios for another episode of Security Matters. Uh, today, we've got a, a sort of a new announcement. Um, Sia, who's doing all these amazing things lately, has now instituted, or I don't know if that's the word, but uh, has started a new audio and intelligent communications working group. Um, and I'm really excited to have Lindsay O'Leary and Cameron Jeff Donnie with me today. Uh, we tried to get the chairman, uh, our, our good friend Dan Rothrock, is going to chair this committee for SIA. Uh, he was busy, so you know we'll get him in another date after he after he actually does some real work. You know, uh, then we'll we'll get him on and let him talk about it. Uh, but um, uh, so Lindsay, thanks for joining me today. Cameron, thanks for being here. Um, I know Cameron's been on before, but Lindsay, it's your first time on Security Matters, so thanks for for taking some time out there. Um, let um, why don't you, could you share with your audience uh, just sort of your history with our industry? I think I've known you since you joined our industry um, from, I think, pharma, right? But you were pharma a long time ago, right? So you've been, yeah, good. So, uh, yeah. but anyway, uh, let our viewers know just, um, you know, kind of uh, what you've been up to and, you know, how, how you've ended up here and maybe uh, how things are going at Zenitel. Sure, yeah. I actually, when I had graduated college, I had done um, subprime mortgage lending and then I had gone into pharmaceutical sales. And I was just constantly looking for really a good industry. And I have a lot of family that's law enforcement and military. And I randomly got a call from a recruiter one day and he had said, how would you like to work in the security industry? He made it sound like I was gonna be an FBI agent. It sounded super <laughs> cool. Um, and I started my career in the security industry at AMAG Technology. And that was, gosh, 2010. That's when you and I met, Andrew. And I worked there for some time. I went on to an LS2, which is an access control manufacturer, for those of you that don't know. And I oversaw the consultant program there. So uh, ultimately, my job was working with consultants and engineers, designers, architects, uh, in order to design access control systems. So for really uh, about that eight, nine years, I was um, promoting the Zenitel Solutions. That's where I uh, reside today. I've been here since April, so right in the cusp of the pandemic, I, I transitioned roles and uh, tran transitioned to Zenitel. Um, Zenitel is a leading provider of intelligent communication solutions. We do tons in regards to intercom and public address, and I uh, oversee our consultant program here. So really, it's about raising audio awareness, um, talking about how our solutions can work cohesively with the access control systems, video management systems, and all the different technology that's installed for buildings. That's awesome. I think um, that that stint in the consultant role, you know, helping them will also help with this working group. I bet, uh, I bet we're going to get our money's worth out of you. <laughs> we'll see, right? <laughs> hey, Cameron. Um, so uh, I don't even know before, but uh, just give our audience um, your uh, your bio there and um, maybe lead us into the uh, the working group and what you know about how it got started. Sure, Andrew, it's good to be back with you. Uh, my background in the industry is pretty straightforward, roughly 10 years in the security industry doing nothing but audio. And whereas Lindsay and Zenitel are very focused on the intercom or the public address side of the audio spectrum, uh, we at Sound Secure focus more on the mic pickup side of the spectrum. So even though we're all under the audio umbrella, uh, we focus on very different applications and very different types of installations. At SoundSecure, we, we see quite a lot of business for point of sale type applications for retail uh, installations, cook service restaurants, convenience stores, where you wouldn't necessarily have um, public address in a 7-Eleven or in a you know, stop and shop type market, uh, but audio is there uh, nonetheless. So I, I hope SIA gets its money's worth out of my involvement, but I am a volunteer. <laughs> so I don't know what that means for the working group. But it's exciting to see that SIA is made audio a priority now. And over the 10 years I've been in the business, I've seen all sorts of questions raised about the uses of audio, where it can be used, and frankly, a lot of misconceptions about what you can or, or can't do, or if you can use audio at all. And one of the conversations Lindsay and I had in, in preparation for this episode was just sharing some of the comments we've heard where someone would say, oh, I've never used audio before, meaning I've never used a microphone at the point of sale, but they've used door intercoms all the time for access control systems, and that's still using sound. So we see audio get lumped into an overarching umbrella all the time, even though the technologies, the uses, the applications vary across a wide range of different applications. So I'm hopeful that through this working group with SIA, 
We'll see some standards crafted. We'll see application guidelines put together uh, in an effort to really show to the entirety of the security industry what's missing from the installations that, they, that installers have been doing and how audio can elevate the, the, the strength, frankly, of the security system by uh, providing a whole host of new information that video cameras by themselves just don't offer. Right. And uh, I mean, I'm a big command and control guy myself, right? And that, that, that ability to hear what's going on and then to speak into a scene when something's happening is super powerful. And that element gets left out a lot. I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, so uh, that, let's, let's stay with that just a little bit. Uh, Lindsay, the, the consultant community, obviously, probably the ones that are at Zenitel are sharpest about, about implementing audio along with their solutions. But is that a, a something that is education still, you know, when and where to put the Zenitel solution and how it fits in different verticals? Uh, is that a, a thing that you have to teach to the consultant community? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think just as a, uh, for our industry as a whole, audio is always the, the part and piece, the technology piece that really isn't brought to the dance soon enough. So, you know, in, in the 10 plus years, I guess, that I've been in the industry, it seemed like access control was kind of leading end users decision process. And consultants were reaching out and they were assessing, you know, which access, access control platform um, made most sense for end users. And that process, when you bring in a consultant um, or even end users directly with their procurement teams, they're typically putting together something called a, an RFI or a request for information. And through that, you know, they're working with the end user, they're assessing what features and functions the end user needs. And then they invite in, you know, the manufacturer to, to come in, talk about their company. They, you know, they're making a long-term investment in that business. They do a product demonstration and then they do that whole manufacturer shootout and they decide on a platform. Well, interestingly enough, that happens with access control and it happens with video. I would, I would say it probably even happens with visitor management in, in many different applications, but for whatever reason, audio, that same process, the evaluation process, we're, we're just thought of as, oh, we realize maybe after we even deploy it, we're not even in the initial design process. It's all of a sudden somebody is outside on the back of a building and they don't have a way of communicating to get back in. Oh, maybe we should put an inter intercom there, right? So it's absolutely about raising awareness anywhere that you have access control and you have you know, a networked camera, there's probably an application for you to have the ability to listen into that area and communicate to it. So yeah, it's, it's, we're really having to ask the right questions and um, get buy-in and a lot of it's just education, which is why I think it's so timely that SIA is putting together this working group. Yeah, I, I, and I like, um, you know, you mentioned standards, Cameron, and, uh, you know, the fact that, you know, Lindsay, we've all been there, right? Not You go to a place, they've got access control on the door, and there's no one in the lobby to see you, which was their vision, that somebody should see you there and let you in, and there's no audio. There's no way to call from there because it got left out. Or mm -hmm. the, the other, so, you know, maybe a standards body can get us some sort of, you know, best practices at least built around where to deploy audio uh, along with access control. The other thing that I hate is when you go, you go to these parking garages and you, the bar won't go up. And I'm not one of them guys that runs over it. I know it'll break away and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, then you push the button. Then you're trying to talk to the guy and you can't hear a word. It's just all, it sounds terrible. So we need some standards there around, you know, what Dan and what, what you know, Zenitel promotes as intelligent communications, right? That ability to absolutely understand what's being said and what you're hearing, you know, what the other guy can hear you and you can hear him intelligently. Um, is this uh, work, you know, because you're on that microphone in Cameron, um, is this a thing that people don't understand? Like when the wind blows, they got these little bitty electric microphones that, you know, aren't, aren't well designed or whatever it may be, but these noisy audio systems are, are kind of common in my experience. Maybe it's just a white. Well, hopefully I can come out to Hawaii and help troubleshoot, <laughs> troubleshoot that for you. I'll come too. But I think you're, you're really onto something, Andrew, with the idea of understanding the audio stream or, or frankly, just basic intelligibility. If you can't hear and you can't respond to what's going on, why have audio in the first place? And you're right. There's all sorts of, uh, of poor performing audio solutions. And to your point, how many times have you been on the phone with somebody and they say, hang on, it's a little bit windy. 
And that's all you hear, even though the phone is right next to their, to their mouth. Um, so for our purposes, it, with not just the working group, but, but my business, Lindsay's business, and the projects that we work on, we want to be sure that our customers can actually hear what's going on. And in the event that they need to respond to it, that a speaker has intelligible output. How many times have we been on a, on a phone call and the audio is garbled or you hear every other word and you say, hang on, I can't hear you. Let me call you on WhatsApp. Let me call you on Skype. Let me use a different platform to communicate with you better because I can't understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. That translates 100% to what we do in the security industry. We want to be sure that when someone says something, they can be understood either by a remote monitor or either by a a reception area where if you buzz in to get access to a building and no one's there, what do you do? You bang on the door harder? That's not a good solution. Let's make a system where you can hear well, you can respond well, and everyone can understand what's being said. And I mean, it's, this is typically, you know, when it's security related, often this is sort of an emergency situation, right? So there's an element of time where we don't have necessarily time to make another call or open another channel. We really need this, this um, audio channel to be open and reliable 100% of the time in the same way we rely on the video or the door position switch or whatever it may be as a component of the security solution. Um, will, do you think that this working group will be able to um, sort of harden some of those ideas. I, I saw that research and some, uh, and maybe publishing some, some research into these uh, problems. Um, are, are they well understood by industry or are, uh, is, is audio just not, um, I don't know if the word's correct, but is it not applied uh, the way it ought to be often enough, right? To enable a uh, good communication channels, um, you know, where, where they're needed. I think, Andrew, that if you look at the types of, um, of folks in our industry who have been installing cameras for years and years, 15, 20, 30 years sometimes, they have a lot of experience doing video. But when it comes time to install audio alongside video, some of the considerations about the, the right way to put in audio are very different from video. And so it's a little bit of an apples to oranges comparison where things like placement of a device of a microphone or a speaker or an intercom are very different than what you would have for a camera. So for our purposes with this working group and, and frankly, just with our own business, we do quite a bit of work in terms of helping people with proper layout, proper placement of devices so that we're sure that they work well. And you're not going to pick up the hum from a HVAC vent, but rather you can hear people talking and you can understand what's being said. And if need be in an emergency situation, you can respond clearly and effectively. Awesome. All right. I love this. Um, so we're, we're with Cameron Jeff Donnie from Sound Secure and Lindsay O'Leary from Zenitel, and we're going to pay some bills for about one minute. We'll be right back. Stick around. Hey, aloha. Welcome back to Security Matters. We're with Lindsay O'Leary and Cameron Javdani today, and we're talking about this new audio and intelligent communications working group that SIA has stood up. Um, Dan Rothrock's going to chair it. We will we'll hear from him after he gets some work done, maybe Q1 or something like that. We'll get him on to talk about what they're, what they're accomplishing. Um, but we were just talking about some of the problems um, with, you know, everybody kind of knows how to... Or, a lot of our industry types know how to deploy a camera or know how to deploy an access control solution, but these audio solutions have their own parameters that really need to be paid attention to in an environment. Um, I know I'm a old, little bit older school with some of these deployments and some of the applications, but we were doing some analytics with some of the listening 
uh, some of that audio that was coming in. So it was giving us some additional types of intelligence in the past. Um, is this a, a thing that we're still doing, Lindsay? Is this, um, you know, what's happening with that world out there? Maybe that's some also, I think something this working group could help us uh, define maybe a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, uh, for us, we obviously promote intelligent communication solutions. So there's a lot of intelligence that's built into our device that's even right at the edge. So for us, when you think about the different applications where you might install these devices, having good quality audio and in indoor types of environments can be really easy. But at the moment you put that out at a gate or you put it out in a campus environment, you put it next to an AC unit, it might even be fine for the majority of the day, but there could be some construction going on and all of a sudden, you know, you don't have good intelligibility. And the whole reason you're putting that device there in the first place is because you need to have effective conversations and be able to effectively listen. So um, our devices actually have intelligence built into them at the edge to where we can filter out any of that ambient noise and then we can project on the receiving end. So if that person is in a noisy environment, they still get that clarity of audio and you have um, intelligible crystal clear communications. So we're really fortunate on that front. I do think in regards to this CEO working group, you know, obviously one of the primary efforts is audio is so pervasive in our daily lives. We have Alexa at home and control of our homes and we use Siri and you get in your car and you can have, um, you know, use it to play music or read text messages. But yet in the security industry, you know, Dan's been beating this drum, you know, about the three-legged stool and situational awareness and access control and video and audio, but yet the adoption still isn't quite there. So I think that the first goal of the CEO working group is really going to be discovery around how do we get invited to the dance earlier? Why is audio in the mm. security space not adopted now? <laughs> it's adopted everywhere else. We're seeing technology start to encompass that. And then I, I think the, the second piece, as we bring in different stakeholders from different technologies, whether it's camera companies, analytic companies, cloud companies, I think they'll we'll be able to kind of zoom out, look at that five-year holistic approach and figure out how we can leverage those analytics and evolve the technology, maybe not even just in um, the audio front, but for video companies, access control, whatever it may be. Yeah. And then, so um, let's talk a little bit about the sort of, well, once we start to integrate this and there's, um, you know, there's always been concerns about this, the cybersecurity wrapped around these. So when we talk about secure and audio that we've recorded as an example. Um, uh, where are we, or do you guys address that with the consultant level? I mean, Jack, uh, Cameron, do you see this kind of stuff coming at you, these questions about, okay, I've got this listening capability now, I'm deploying it, I've got the audio being, you know, streaming to the cloud or streaming to a server. Um, are people um, hardening or, or concerned about hardening uh, that? Or, and are, are there any even regulations around the storage and, and you know, maybe encryption of, of those uh, audio files? I'm not aware of myself. Yeah, so that, that question has come up uh, quite a bit more in the past, we'll say six or 12 months than it has in the rest ah. of my experience in this business um, for two reasons. One, I think just basic awareness of the, the need for cyber hardened security systems, but also because of the, the NDAA and being sure that if you're using uh, security technologies in the United States that you have compliant equipment um, for our purposes, 90 plus percent of the time, our devices connect to an IP camera. And so by okay. extension, using the camera's uh, cybersecurity protocols or NDAA compliance, then we by extension fall under that umbrella. Uh, but we see the, the interest in that growing uh, with respect to storage or, or how long to keep data, that varies wildly. Um, mm -hmm. We might have a you know, small retailer just need to keep it for a week or two. And in case something happens or there's a security incident, they have it archived. Whereas in public sector projects, you see requirements stretching beyond 12 months, sometimes even longer. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it varies quite a bit, quite a great deal in terms of how long the storage requirements are. The good news is for audio, though, we're talking about a tiny fraction of storage space compared to video recording. Um, I mean, it's almost a rounding error when you when you think about it. Um, we recommend as a rule of thumb to calculate one megabyte per minute of storage, which when you compare to any kind of megapixel resolution and now four and 8K cameras, you almost don't even need to calculate it because it's such a small percent. But at the same time, you do get that clear signal. You get the understandable, intelligible audio of what happened. Um, we see the demand for that also increasing in applications like remote monitoring. And so when you mentioned something like gunshot detection, 
when you go to a, a security control center or an operations center and they need to verify that alarm, you can play back that sound that caused the alarm, marry it up with the video feed and say, do you see someone with a weapon? Do you see someone yelling for help or hear someone yelling for help rather? And so you can instantly verify those types of alarms using an audio video solution. But again, it's something that a camera by itself just wouldn't give you. So, and so Lindsay, is that, have you seen that same thing like rep, like with the consultant community that you're talking about? So that, um, you know, we've, we've got to, or maybe that's where some, some type of standards might help us. If we said we need such and such, you know, DB um, of, cl of clarity, right? Some sort of decibel level as a requirement of, of clearance or, um, and now you were talking a little bit about the bandwidth as well, Cameron. So the, and that's where I lost you about, I remember doing uh, eight by eight systems, it seems like 15 years ago. And the audio channel was about 8k compared to the video channel, right? Which was, I don't, I don't remember back then, but uh, I know that audio doesn't take a whole lot of space. Are, are, um, are the consultants community, um, are they actively storing video as part of their solutions? Does it come from the client side or, or is it something that they recommend that people um you know deploy and, and pay attention to uh for, are you talking about video or for audio uh, uh, on the audio side yeah so when they're when they're bundling that in is it is it driven by a, a customer requirement is are there do you come across like compliances in different states around audio that's different from video i, I just don't i'm not aware of the the rules yeah, and I think Cameron actually probably knows a little bit more about uh, the legality front. We were, I know when him and I were prepping, he was telling me a little bit about that. Um, you know, only being at Zenitel for six months, I've asked those questions. It does vary state by state. I actually grew up in California, and in California, you know, you have to be very careful about recording and signage if you are recording. And then I recently moved to Texas, and I guess here, and I don't want to misspeak, um, but I'm pretty sure that you don't even have to have signage that really um, they can record you at, at any point, you know, provided you're in a public setting that that video can be recorded and also the associated audio, but it is um, specific to each location customer needs. But when you think about um, incidents and whether you're having a, a live event and you need to be able to, to listen into what's transpiring and you need to be able to communicate, you could still have that two-way communication without recording that audio. So there, there still is tremendous um, value in having audio devices, whether you're recording or not. One thing we are seeing a ton of requests for right now, though, based on the pandemic, is pre-recorded messages, because policies and procedures are changing, you know, week by week, month by month. So, you know, um, as people slowly start to return to work, they are taking advantage of um, event-based pre-recorded messages that can let people know you need to stay six feet apart, you need to be wearing a mask. And as that evolves until we, you know, all potentially go back into the office type settings, um, they can easily make those changes on the fly. So, um, but the recording piece is a little bit um, varied. That's interesting. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. So Cameron, is, is, is there a position that the SIA has or that our industry has around video currently uh, that we've messaged to, to government or, I, I'm pretty sure there are differing state laws about, you know, uh, to Lindsay's point about signage and, and, and uh, awareness for the, the consumers in spaces and things like that. Uh, is there a, a, a position that we have as an industry? I, you know, this is definitely outside of my area of expertise here. Andrew, that's one of the things that this working group will tackle. Um, with respect to the differences state by state, there's two ways to answer that question. One is to put on my lawyer hat, even though I'm not a lawyer, and <laughs> refer to all the different state statutes in all 50 states in DC and Puerto Rico. Uh, if you're interested in that, by the way, you can go to our website, sound-secure.com, and there's a handy reference chart where you can look at the actual statute in your state and, and see what it says. Uh, the second way to answer that is just the common sense way, which doesn't always mix with the legal world, right? Uh, but when you think about it, we use audio in all 50 states. You have call centers in all 50 states that record phone calls. And when you call a customer service line, what's the first thing you hear? This call is recorded for training or for quality assurance or for whichever reason of the day that they're giving you. So I've been involved in audio recording projects in all 50 states in the country uh, and a number of international markets as well. The question isn't necessarily, is it legal? Is it illegal? Can you do it? Can you not do it? But rather, how do you do it? And when I get asked the question, uh, can you use audio? To me, it's a little bit like asking the question, can you drive a car 50 miles an hour? And if you're going down a residential neighborhood, no, of course not. The speed limit's 25. You can't drive 50. But if you're driving on the highway, 
you in fact need to speed up and, and do a little bit more. Uh, so just like you would never put a video camera in a restroom or a fitting room in a department store, there are certain places you wouldn't put a microphone either. Uh, but we always recommend a sound secure provide notification through one means or another, be it signage, be it an employee memo or, or other ways to remove that expectation of privacy and let people know that there's audio on site and frankly video as well, even though the statutes are a little bit different. Uh, so one of the questions we get, not necessarily more than others, but it's pretty darn close is, hey, I wanna use audio, what steps do I need to take to be sure that I'm using it the right way? Uh, and answering that question in a standardized way will absolutely be a focus of this working group. That's awesome. Well, we're getting down. We've got a couple minutes left. Um, Lindsay, you want to give us your final thoughts on maybe some things you expect from the working group or um, maybe the marching orders uh, Dan thrown at you already? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think it's going to be an evolving process, but really as the um, coalition starts to evolve, I just think it's really important that if anybody does have interest in providing feedback, whether it's in the security realm or, or even technology that's maybe outside, I mean, I, I think we understand the importance of audio, but um, the more uh, resources we get with different backgrounds, we all, even if, you know, for us, we've all been in the security industry, but we've all lived through different customer experiences, different applications. And I think it's just going to be really nice if we can um, open up this group and can get more feedback from a really diverse type of audience. Awesome. I hope so. Uh, Cameron, your thoughts or some uh, your expectations for the group? Well, I think we're bringing together a great coalition in the industry with all, type, all types of subject matter expertise in audio. And, you know, again, I think that the sector of the industry that has used sound for security systems gets lumped together too often, even though the types of technology that we have are, are vastly different. You know, the example of, of sound secure versus Zenitel, right? We, we don't go head to head. We don't really have a, a matching product line, but we get lumped in the audio umbrella, um, mm. though that the what we offer is, is very different. So I'm excited to see the different um, types of folks who are going to volunteer for this working group and excited to put a, a brain trust together, if you will, about the best ways to not just apply audio and sound to different types of security systems, to different types of remote monitoring applications, but really craft that best practices guide that shows how installers and how end users can take advantage of sound technologies to make their systems a little bit more strong. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Command and control needs audio. Check out Tia's Audio and Intelligent Communications Working Group. Be a part of the solution, people. Thanks so much, Lindsay. Thanks for joining me. Cameron, thanks for being here. Uh, join next week. Cameron's going to be guest hosting, and uh, we'll talk about that one later. Take care, everybody. Aloha. <laughs>